Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to introduce some awesome techniques to achieve a realistic render in Blender. You can use these tips for any render, such as character, environment and more. The first thing you need is great models and textures. I've pre-made this zombie and everything is set up. I'll be using cycles for rendering. Lights are very important, the type of light, its position, intensity and color. For example, I have three lights in the scene. The first one is placed above the character. You can see its intensity, which is based on the scene scale and other factors. Most of the other settings are fairly standard. The second light is a powerful rim light positioned behind the character. It creates striking highlights around the skin, as you can see especially in the air area. If I disable it, you can see it looks quite dull. The third light is unnecessary and I forgot to remove it, but it's not too late to do so. Let's add another area light using Ctrl and A. You can also use other types of lights. However, for rendering a character, especially at close distances, I prefer to use area lights. I want to place the slide at a bad angle to see what happens. The light is best in front of the character, so let's increase the intensity. Ok, this value looks good. Let's move closer to the creature. As you can see, everything is washed out. There are almost no shadows. Shadows are the most important element in rendering. You need to adjust the angle of the light specifically for shadows. That's why I'm using a light positioned above. Shadows in these areas can make your result realistic. The second important aspect is the light intensity. Higher values can overwhelm the eye and obscure your details. I'm also using an HDRI. I'm in the world section of the shader editor, in case you are unfamiliar with it. Here I'm using an HDRI that I downloaded from HDRI Haven's website. To add an HDRI, press Ctrl A and then search for the environment texture. Then press open if you want to add an HDRI to the scene. After that, you can press Ctrl T to add a coordinate node and change the texture's coordinates. You can watch the tutorial on lighting techniques and tips here. Also, link is in the description. These dark areas are eliminated slightly by the HDRI. Let's take a look. If I change it to zero, the shadowed area will become darker. This is not good at all. However, with HDRI, ambient global illumination will be added. The model has displacement. If you are not familiar with it, you can watch the tutorial here. I have a subdivision modifier and displace modifier, both of which are necessary for adding details and achieving realistic renders. The levels are set to zero, let's change that. Press Z to switch to solid mode. I can see better in this mode. Now let's change the viewport subdivision levels to two. As you can see, a lot of details have been added, making it quite heavy. You need to set the strength based on your needs. Go to the texture section. The resolution is 4K, which is good and suitable for this render. Let's take a look at the skin shader. It's quite basic, but it will suffice for this render. If you are interested in learning how to create a professional skin shader, you can watch the tutorial here. To provide more details, you may need to add a detail normal map to your shader and blend it with the base normal map. Anyway, the textures I'm using are 4K, which is of good quality. The most important element in creating realism is subsurface scattering. It's an important capability especially for skin. I explained it in detail in the skin tutorial. The subsurface effect is applied to thin areas like ears, with little effect on other areas. Let's disable it by setting the radius to zero. The shader is completely ruined and it's very bad. You can see the effect of subsurface scattering. It plays a key role in adding realism. Let's revert it back and see the differences again. 
You can also increase the scale value based on your needs, but 0.12 is sufficient for me. I've created a simple volume. You can watch the tutorial on how to create professional fog volume here. Adding volume is one of the important things to enhance realism. As you can see, the shader is simple and I'm using a principal volume shader. I can see some white areas in the shadows when using volume. A volume or atmosphere is necessary for every environment, but its strength can vary. The render gets darker when I disable the fog. Now it's better, we can also adjust the intensity and emission. Emission can change the brightness of the volume, as you can see it's too foggy. Let's compare them. If you look at this view in the real world, you might see the ears as blurry, because you are focused on the mouth and nose. This is not a realistic render. We need to go to the camera settings and enable depth of field. I need to adjust the distance from the camera to the object to achieve the focus point. As the f-stop is lower, the depth of field effect is stronger. I need to try many values. Okay, I think it's much better. The camera focus is no on the nose and mouth, and the air is blurred. Actually, all the distant objects are blurred. Depth of field is one of the key factors in adding realism. I've included a link in the description detailing how to add depth of field. The next thing is motion blur. I need to find it in the render settings. Here let's enable motion blur. It adds blurriness when characters or objects move in the scene, creating a cinematic and realistic effect in the final render. If you don't have animation on your objects or characters, like in my scene, you can do it manually in Photoshop. Let's proceed. To add motion blur to this render, I need to duplicate the main layer. Then go to the filter menu, choose blur and select motion blur. Here I need to change the direction, then you can adjust the distance or string of it. Then I need to add a mask to hide all the layers. Press Alt and then click on the mask. Then press B to select the brush and set it to white to remove parts of the mask. You can press X to change the color. Then paint on the areas you want to unmask. You can try different areas and if you're not satisfied you can mask it again using black. This is the final result. The next important step is composition. Let's move on to compositing. There are some unnecessary nodes here that I don't need. But first I need to activate viewport or real-time compositing here. I'm using camera mode, so the effects are only visible through the camera. The detailed composition tutorial is in the description. Now I need to remove the tone map. The first node I need is Lens Distortion. And then connect it to the Viewer node. Then a value for Lens Dispersion must be chosen. Ok, this is good. The next thing is the Glare node. Set it to fog glow and then let's adjust the threshold. As the threshold is lower, the intensity of the glare is higher. Ok, this is good. Let's add the next node by pressing Ctrl A. I need a color balance node. I want to select a green tone. Let's try different views by switching the camera. 
As you can see, there are a lot of differences between this one and before. There are a lot of techniques that you can try and learn to achieve realistic results. And you can share any useful techniques with others in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions and ideas, feel free to share them in the comments.